वेलकम बैक टू दिस चैनल दिस इज बिजनेस नर्ट पॉडकास्ट आई एम आकाश आई होस्ट बिजनेस नर्ट पॉडकास्ट एंड दिस सीरीज दैट यू आर वाचिंग इज बिजनेस नर्ट पॉडकास्ट स्टॉक मार्केट सीरीज इफ यू आर न्यू टू द चैनल लेट मी गिव यू अ क्विक इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ व्हाट दिस पॉडकास्ट इज अबाउट सो देयर आर टू वेरिएंट्स सो द फर्स्ट वन द बिजनेस नर्ट पॉडकास्ट मेन थिंग वेयर आई इनवाइट लॉट ऑफ एंटरप्रेन्योर्स फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड टू शेयर देयर स्टोरीज टू हेल्प यू गाइस विद योर बिजनेस दिस सीरीज दैट यू आर वाचिंग बिजनेस नर्ट पॉडकास्ट स्टॉक मार्केट सीरीज is particularly focused on the stock markets especially the indian stock markets where i'm from where i am actively investing looking at the markets i wanted to do a lot of solo podcast i thought of incorporating my own ideas into this podcast so i can share my understanding of the stock markets and help you guys with the same thing now i did a couple of episodes in the past where there were a lot of like ideas being thrown around i received a lot of feedback so i wanted to do a little bit of in depth a uh, podcast it's going to give you a full experience of what uh, like research guys do in the back end so that you guys understand how we think how we navigate how we look at news how we connect the dots connect find out stocks with that news so you can understand how you can do it yourself so this is going to be a very in depth podcast going to be a fun engaging podcast you learn a lot you understand how you can, you'll be able to understand how you can take one news and figure out what what's the impact of that news and connect your dots if you are trying to uh, look at that sector if you have any investments in that portfolio you can like correlate those data points so that's the main idea it's going to be a very fun podcast this is a new thing that i'm trying let me know how you like it like leave a comment let me know if you like some ideas want me to improve on some parts so like let's start with uh, one thing that's affecting the market heavily like the market has crashed heavily let's just look at uh nifty nifty yeah so you can see in the last one month nifty has gone from 26150 to 24200 like that's a lot of crash like if you look at it in the percentage wise somewhere on 87 or 8% it's not a lot if you look at it in percentage wise but like absolute terms it's a lot of uh, like people have lost a lot of money in it specifically there's a talk of fii's running away from the indian markets now why are they doing it so first let's look at like how much they have invested so i was looking at some data like somewhere around 800 billion dollars and they've only sold uh, 1 lakh crores like so some 800 billion dollars is somewhere around 68 lakh crores so it's a huge amount and they've sold a very fraction of it so we shouldn't be worried that they are leaving the market they are booking profits they might have uh, opportunities in the other areas like china is doing well right now so they might be going to china so let me give you some idea of why i think fis will come back like first of all like indian markets are doing phenomenally well like us is kind of struggling with their own problems but we have solved a lot of problems in india if you look at fii's behavior like in the, if you look at different behaviors like let's say last year they didn't enter the indian markets in 2021 2020 like maybe they did in the 2020 but 2021 2022 they were sitting out but 2022 was a great year to invest they entered somewhere around 2023 and like that whole period they left out and there was a huge rally in that period they would buy a stock that was trading at 100 rupees and that was che- available at a cheaper price which was maybe let's say 70 or 80 but now that is trading at 100 they'd still buy it because the company looks good and right now there are a lot of companies that are available at a very cheap valuations we'll talk about it i have a different bonus section so stick to this video like i'll share why you should be looking at these sectors and why i like them so i'm i'm going to share my point of view but this general notion that fii's are exiting and then that's a bad thing for the market so that's not true like they have their own uh, like investment thesis understanding of the market so just because fii's are exiting that doesn't mean that you should sit out of the market we are ignoring a lot of good sectors first of all like we are ignoring a lot of good sectors i'm seeing a lot of people throwing opinions that let's say PSU stocks. I've been very bullish on PSU stocks, PSU sector in general, and I'm seeing opinions that PSU stocks are going to crash. PSU stocks are not going to do well. I mean, I don't buy it. Like, I don't understand why. Because if you look at it logically, private consumption is not 
happening like rural demand is bad we saw hul commentary and they said that the government is taxing a lot of uh, middle class people and that's why they don't have a lot of purchasing power that's one of the factors uh, private capex is not happening demand is bad so we can correlate all these ideas what's the outcome of it so if you look at net net end result like government is getting money because of the taxation and everything so government is the one that has the highest amount of money so they are known to run a lot of capex uh, programs like we saw what they did with defense we saw what they did with infra we saw what they did with railways as well i did a special video on railways like if you haven't looked at it go check it out I looked at railways in somewhere around December 2022 when it was just at an inflection point. I was very early to spot that trend. Like I'm very happy I did. But if you guys haven't, like go check out those videos. Now, government has the highest amount of cash. So think about it logically. Government will want to grow Indian economy, so they will spend in some sector. Let's we'll talk about which sector, but they'll spend somewhere to drive growth. Let's establish that. now whichever sectors they pick is where the stocks will rise so right now i'm seeing a lot of public sector banks rising i'm seeing a lot of infrastructure companies going up so those are two broader themes that i can give you we'll nail it down further so this general idea that uh, indian market is bad fis are selling rural demand is bad this is bad like we can focus on all the bad things but there's also a lot of good things happening like we've done a lot of clean up in the banking space we've done a lot of uh, like we've, we've established a lot of systems like make in india is working well manufacturing is doing well auto is kind of struggling but overall if you look at the entire market collectively like we are in a much better place the system is doing fine we'll see some rate cuts now gdp growth did slow down in the last uh, quarter so i think in this coming a uh, meeting that we have uh, we're going to see some rate cuts from the RBI we'll see from US Fed as well i think it's in this week and that's going to continue like that cycle will continue from here on once we see some rate cut the market may rise from there we have a very important event that's the US elections that's going to affect a lot of sectors as well like let's say auto it will affect auto companies it will affect IT i think IT is overdone like they won't repeat that mistake but auto is one sector that where we will see some sort of pain because Donald Trump is known to be a tariff king like it'll they'll hit tariffs on indian auto companies and that's going to negatively affect them so that's one prediction that i can make from the us elections not the auto in general like all of them but select companies let's say uh like aisha motors because donald trump doesn't like indian uh, government taxing on harley davidson bikes so that might affect uh like aisha motors me bajaj auto or hero motor car like we'll have to look at it further so that's the two broader themes now the next thing that i wanted to talk about is how do you assess like what's the general trend like now i'll take you to my screen us presidential election so i'll give you some interesting ideas as well so let's say this uh Israel Iran conflict that we have I think I shared this in my uh, on my Instagram recently I talked about why oil will rise oil oil companies will do well from there on and then it rose a little bit and then it came down now the same thing happened last year if you don't want to play like themes that are too risky like oil then there are some simple uh, themes that you can play something like let's say let's say you're looking at money control and then you come across some uh, article which says that us polls F- fomc meeting q2 earnings swiggy ipo 10 factors to watch for the next week okay so now let's go to 10 factors what are the 10 factors first is us elections okay the continuation of donald trump in power may result in escalation of russia ukraine war however if trump led republicans come to power we expect that tensions will subside and even the crisis itself will be settled now this says that the uh, the war may come to an end which is uh, russia ukraine 
what was the impact of it? Like, let's think about it. Like, how is India connected to Russia? We buy a lot of oil from Russia at a cheaper price. We recently saw government imposing some sanctions on uh, India because of some connection to Russia. Let's look at that. So this is something that I was constantly looking at. So this is how you do it. Like you track news and then you try to connect dots. Like you can see India responds to US sanctions against 19 companies or support for Russia. Not in violation law. I don't think there's any public companies that are sanctioned. So you don't need to worry too much of, about that. So that's still fine. Now, how do you analyze which sector are they going to cover next? Right, because you might see some uh, sanctions being hit on the Indian companies after Donald Trump comes to power. So auto is one area where you should focus on. To look at history, let's see Donald Trump sanctions Indian auto companies. Now, this article says that Trump win may impact India's IT sector, but defense, energy and commodities may benefit. Now, let's try to understand what that means and then we'll look at which companies to avoid. Now, this is one thing that I came across. I've never read this article. This is just my way of saying, my way of showing how I would look at this news and how I would interpret it, connect dots to some stocks that I may have or might want to purchase if I want to benefit out of this. It, it seems like the, the assumption is Donald Trump is going to win because that's what the polls, the ratings show us. So we're going by that. So assuming Donald Trump wins, so what would we do? Prime FAC impact seems harsher if Trump wins. Given his anti-immigration stance, however, Indian IT companies have tried to de-risk the challenge by hiring more locals that they have done already, like in the last uh, election when Donald Trump was elected. So they have already uh, like hired a lot of locals in the US. So we don't need to worry too much of that. In the auto sector, the report suggests that demand for EVs components from Indian suppliers may decrease in the short term due to potential reduction in EV incentives under Trump. However, this could also prompt a shift towards hybrid vehicles, stabilizing demand in the medium term. Additionally, Trump's infrastructure and manufacturing spending plans, including boosting Class A trucks, would likely benefit Indian auto company manufacturers. Now, we saw how if Trump comes to power, it's going to negatively affect IT companies, which has been overdone, like it's not going to happen now. But the auto sector is going to struggle if uh, Trump comes to power. But we'll see some demand coming back of Class A trucks. Tata Motors is a major player. There's Ashok Leyland, there's Mahindra. We'll have to look at all those companies. We'll have to correlate which uh, company has some percentage, which company has the highest percentage of exports to the US and like correlate if the company is doing well. Now this is an interesting play. This is very important. If Donald Trump comes to power, he's going to spend on infrastructure, which could include projects like in constructing a border wall, like he said it in the past as well, protecting domestic industries to boost uh, demand for the domestic markets. That is going to have effects, tail effects on the metals and like fossil fuels like oil that demand like if you're seeing right now oil companies trading at a lower valuation consider one impact that could drive the prices of those stocks up and i think this could be it i don't know if there's this will play out but i have a strong conviction like i, I can just feel that if this happens what we're seeing in like oil companies ongc oil india we'll see an entirely different game for them. So this is not me recommending Oil India. First of all, like I'm just correlating ideas of Trump winning and his spending on infrastructure, which will have downstream effects on the oil sector. All right, so that is one area that will be affected. Additionally, the report highlighted that Trump's anticipated push for higher tariffs on Chinese goods 
could create massive opportunities for Indian sectors such as textile, auto components, consumer electronics, enhancing their competitiveness in the US market. Now, that is a good point. Indian uh, auto components, if they were going, if the US companies are purchasing from China, they'll move to India because US and China don't get along well. So the other areas which India could benefit are like electronics. Uh, then there is, I don't know, auto components, textiles. So how do we search that? If you were to look at textiles, so let's move to this uh, portal which is Stock Edge. I really like Stock Edge. Big shout out to Stock Edge team and Vivek Bajaj. I love how they have built uh, this platform which in a very simple way that you can search for stocks. I have the premium version if, you, if you're trying to search for different like stocks through different combinations, filters and everything like it has all of it. So check it out. This team is doing really well. I wanted to give a shout out to them. Let's focus on the sectors. Let's say there's a there's a tab here which says sectors. Now let's search for textiles. So the entire textile sector. Now if I want to understand which companies are doing well from here, how do you identify it? Now there are different filters. Let's see. Let's establish with, I don't know, sales, PE, PEG, ROC. So you can see page industries is very expensive, but I wouldn't recommend it. How about LMW? Still a very expensive stock, but what about Wellspun is doing good. I recently read about Wellspun. 140 to 200. Now it's back. Raymond. Raymond is doing well. It's a good company, a good brand. They're struggling. They were struggling in the past. Now they're not. Like look, if you look at in the last five years, it has generated massive wealth for investors. Raymond is a good stock for textiles. Check it out if you're an investor. So far, I can see Raymond. Now, what is this scan that they have on stockage? So how it is like you go to my combination. It's a paid version. Let's name it. Uh, something like textile scan. How I would add it is let's say the sales growth has to be good. They have consistently high sale growth and it has the sales growth has been growing like the growth in sales is growing for the last uh, let's say annually it's growing well. Why why it's growing well. Consistently sales growth, quarterly it's doing well as well. I want it to be profitable. All right. So what are the stocks that it generated? None of them. I think it's because <clears throat> it didn't generate stocks because uh, textiles is not growing quarterly. Like it's a sector, it's a cyclical theme. So you might not see it growing in every quarter, you might see some growth yearly, except for Trend, like Trend is an outlier, it's one of the best companies, I wish I had invested, but not all of them are doing well. Now, one stock that it generated is Vedant Fashions. It has been growing consistently. Now, let's see. In the last one year, it has grown from 900 to 1330 last 10 years it's flat it's a 33000 crore company it's a large cap company now if you look at mutual funds a lot of them are invested so this is it where you can find mutual funds so why mutual funds i want mutual fund guys to support the stock at this price i want to validate my thesis that i'm not the only one thinking the same thing 
I'm not the only one jumping on the same stock. Like I want some support from mutual fund guys as well. So if they are buying, like that means that you as a retail investor are thinking in the right lines. You want some support from mutual fund guys. You want some support from, uh, I don't know, somebody, some institutional investor to buy that stock, to drive the stock price up because those guys buy in bulk. Like you can't drive the stock price up with just 100 shares. You have to look at, are you thinking in the right lines? Are you buying the right stock? Are you buying the right sector? Are you buying at the right price? Because timing is everything. It's not that you can't time it. I understand that. But you also have to time the overall theme. Like, is this sector doing well? Is this sector not doing well? So you, you have to calculate a lot of things like opportunity cost as well. Like you don't want to stick to that stock for four or five years and miss out on other trending sectors. So that is my way of looking at it. Like Vedant Fashion, Raymond are two stocks to look at in terms of, uh, I don't know, textiles. Now, what about other areas? Now, here's one thing that I would do. Let's say I found Vedant Fashions. Right? I want to track this. I'm not just going to buy it, but I'm going to track it. They have a good feature, like, again, big shout out to Stock Edge. They have a feature called watch list. They can just click on star and then it's going to add a lot of, uh, I don't know, it's going to add to, it's going to populate a lot of watch lists. So I have all these watch lists. Um, sometimes I'm looking at just momentum. Then I have like smaller stocks, then news, mutual funds big investor portfolio and then there was some investor conference, some turnaround stocks, something that I want to buy later during market crashes and there's risky bets. So this is how I like uh, make watch lists so you can check it out. So I'm just going to add it to, I don't know, let's say mutual fund because I found it through a mutual fund list. Now, what other sectors did we, did we find? So one is electronics. So for electronics, something that comes to my mind is BEL Bharat Electronics it's a PSU company again BEL uh, Bharat Dynamics all these stocks ran up they made a lot of money for investors by the way like if you don't know if you look at BDL BEL let me just show you in the last five years BEL went up from 20 to 300 like that's a lot of money so look at such stocks that are going to have some push from uh, like the government's news, some push from investors, some push from mutual fund guys, retail participation that has high likelihood of generating 20-30% in like 6 or 8 months. And that's more than enough Like if you're just striving for momentum like 20-30% in a less than a year it's a lot of investment, it's a lot of return, Like you can't expect more just repeat the same process over and over again so that you have a uh, good alpha over mutual fund returns right so it's consumer electronics auto components textiles so right now i'm not very bullish on auto components but if you were to search for auto components we use we do the same thing instead of textiles we go for uh, auto So it generated six or seven companies, which is Timken, Sona, BLW, Forgings, Aisha Motors, Castrol, Bal Krishna Industries. You can look at Bal Krishna Industries, tires and allied, like it manufactures tires for the auto company. Then there is another company that is Timken India. It's a small cap company. Timken is a small cap company of, it's a, it's a mid cap company, 25,000 crore. It has anti-friction bearings, mechanical power transmission products and other service businesses. Right? It work, It covers power transmission services as well. So it's it's working, they're doing in, they're working in power generation as well as auto. Now valuation wise, 64P, still expensive. 64P is not a cheap company. Just because we found some news doesn't mean that we go and buy. It's still a very expensive company. You have to look at a lot of, you have to look at, you don't just go find a stock and buy it. You hold on to it and you wait for some inflection point. You wait for some, uh, like some sign that this stock is going to rise from here. Hold on to this, write it down in your notes. What I do is I create watch list. If you're not so disciplined with watch list, like write it down in a notebook, like even that is fine. 
so that was how i look at news and then we find data from websites like stockage you can use other websites as well like uh, screener screener is one website that you can use now before we wrap up this podcast i wanted to share what is happening with mutual fund guys fis are selling mutual fund guys are buying the stocks that they are selling so it's not that just that fis are selling and we are seeing this crash mutual funds are actively buying in this market they are buying for the long term so let's look at something that mutual fund guys are buying so every month mutual fund guys release a report of changes that they did in the mutual fund schemes and then if you see some increment or decrement in it you can understand where their focus is for the next one or two months at least in the short term if not long term i think it's just the third day and we had these diwali holidays that's why uh, october list is not out yet so we can look at september list uh, that is not going to do us a lot of favor because we saw a lot of changes in october september list is not going to work right now for short term trades but like mo- short term momentum trades but if you look at broader themes i think mutual fund guys will give you some idea like let's look at mutual funds so they are they have another section in stockage mutual funds where we can search for schemes let's say infrastructure so right now you can see why i chose infrastructure is because let's uh, let me show you in the the premium category there's a feature called sector rotation so this sector this data gives you idea of where the money is flowing sector rotation gives you idea of where the money is flowing so right now two themes three themes that are doing well ratings infrastructure and banking so we saw why psu banks ran up now you can understand oh like psu banks are running up because the sector is rotating it's working in the favor and that is going to continue it's not that uh, the stocks will crash from here on banking stocks will do well because they are doing PSU banks are generating better results compared to private banks. So infrastructure is one area where there could be some sort of movement so because right now infrastructure is going up as well. So let's see what mutual fund guys bought in the infrastructure space in the September month. If you just pick at ICICI Prudential and infrastructure. So in the September month you can how you can click on September and then you can see the highest allocation that they have done that increment that they have done is like in adani ports big shout out to adani like i covered adani stocks during the hindenburg crash like if you haven't checked out that video as well like check it out i like i don't know something around so january of 2023 when like things started crashing for adani i think i shared a lot of uh, ideas on adani like why it was a good idea at that time like if you haven't tracking my content check it out like i really recommend you watch that video because the conviction that i had in adani at that time like it was unmatched like i've never had that kind of conviction in other stocks in other sector like i have never had such conviction about a company when something was going bad for it so check it out i I'm, i really was like i'm trying to document a lot of these things because i can look at all these videos and then learn from it myself because i'm just sharing my ideas of what's going to happen from uh different angles different areas where things are looking good and like that's the underlying like mantra for like business or podcast like whether it's stock markets whether it's marketing whether it's like business in general like other videos like guests that i've have it is just to bring value to people help you guys build your thing in whatever niche that you are from like whatever niche i'm working from whatever niche i'm focusing on and whichever guests come the like whoever comes from different industries so it's just the only goal is to have people build your business now let's get back to this for state bank of india you can see they are trying to increase stake in state bank state bank of india now that is a good sign for psu stocks because psu banks have run up recently so it is likely that uh, psu state bank of india will run up if you look at just last one month it made a low of 800 and then it went up i think sbi pnb bank of india bank of maharashtra central bank all these banks the government banks will do well because they have 
the highest amount of deposits in terms of infrastructure you can look at private public companies track these movements look at the details like what happened after this what happened before that what was the consequence of it what was the impact of some news if you write down all these ideas you'll be able to document it and then you can use it for future like events that emerge from them so these are the little details that we track most research guys just look at what's there in the public domain it's not that they have any sort of special information like i've i've spoken to a lot of investors even the guys who are from the mutual fund industries uh, like samir arora one of the guys who i really admire like he helped me like understand how you can look at a stock how you can correlate some ideas so i've shared those ideas as well like I, he came on my podcast i invited him like he was honest throughout the video like go check it out that interview that i did with him and like i've had a lot of guests as well like alok jain from beacon investing amazing person uh if you if you were just looking at like uh technical guys like research guys from news channels like neeraj shah from entity profit came on my podcast and then there was mangla malu from cnbc all these guys like they shared the one thing that was common in them is that they put in the work they put in the work through these simple tools that we have now apart from all these stocks and sectors that i shared i wanted to share what i'm looking at in this market and the reason behind it so the first one i already shared psu banks the deposit growth is far better than com- compared to like private uh, banks so psu banks is one of them then there is metals china is the biggest consumer of metals so if china does well their infrastructure their housing market does well the metal industries globally will do well we might see some sort of correction in metals because of some china improvements some some supply crunch or anything but at least for one year metals will do well so keep in mind like i'm going to keep tracks on it because i really like a few metal companies uh i have a publicly shared as well like dollar index and metal companies have a uh, like inverse relation and that i've shared that video as well now there's a next thing that i really like which is omcs when i shared omcs it was che- very cheap i think around 2 or 3 months ago or somewhere around june they were very cheap and they went up 20 30% from there and then it crashed from there because of oil prices they had a huge hit in their inventories now they're back to the same levels that we saw in june omcs in general like they generate massive profits they're very cheap so it's not just one segment that will do well which is evs now we're also going to see a broader bull market and omcs have fallen short in this bull market they are not the stocks have not ran up in the last 2 or 3 years like maybe 100% somewhere from there but not a lot and compared to the bull market that we have it hasn't risen that much and the valuations are cheap the future looks bright they have a good dividend yield uh now that we have like relatively stable government like that's not that's out of the picture like we're not going to see some sort of uh you know like popular schemes like subsidizing petrol prices so that that's out of the question i am very bullish on omcs that's just my point of view there are a handful of companies in it look at it my biased opinion is i'm bullish on commodities and i'm bullish on omcs fourth one which is power financing companies now broader if you look at overall power industry like solar it is very well priced in at this price like the power companies are trading at like astounding valuations like i've i've never seen uh, like stocks run up so much like 10x 20x and still have a huge demand and power is one theme that i really missed out on and like i should have looked at it but right now since all these stocks have priced in one sector that is underpriced right now it is like the financing side of power companies two or three listed companies i'm not going to name them but i give you a broader idea that sector is going to do well despite any sort of downsides down moments in the solar companies the power companies look at those companies those four sectors that i shared and the last one and like i i'm i'm very like eternal bull on this sector which is it i i i know a lot of people disagree with it being a bull market but right now if the let's give you i'll give you a few scenarios let's say the market crashes right market crashes us elections we see results of us election the dollar goes up for a while what happens when the dollar goes up rupee crashes what's the direct beneficiary of that it now in another case let's say it companies 
uh, I don't know, they have some sort of dip because of problem like overvaluations in the US. I don't think the spending in the AI services will stop if there's a downturn in like the tech stocks. Indian IT companies are not direct product companies. They are kind of accountability partners. When I say accountability partners, it's kind of, it, think of it like a gym coach. Everyone wants to get fit. Everyone wants to get competitive. So they have fitness coaches. So that the end goal, like getting fit doesn't end. And the same is going to happen with IT companies. They're clients. They need to implement all these AI infrastructure, AI services in their systems. It's not that they can think of it, they can look at their competitors, are they doing it? Is this guy doing it? Is this company doing it? Should we spend five billion in it? Because I don't know if it's going to have a direct impact on my top line. That is not, that's not the question. They have to do it to survive. Whether or not the impact occurs, that's a different question. But to play that odd, like if I spend this much, I'm going to be safe at least for the next five years. If I, if I come across a problem that's going to happen in the IT service. Nandan Dilikani explained this on like a podcast of, I listened to that and it made a lot of sense. He said that IT guys, they don't want to like take a chance of missing out on AI growth. Whether or not it impacts their bottom line, top line, they would want to invest in it because the risk of not doing it is higher than the risk of them losing 5-10 billion in the next one or two years. So I'm very bullish on IT in general. Like this is going to be one of those themes that's going to continue because the same thing happened in IT in 2017, 2018. Everyone said digital is bad. Uh, nobody's going to invest in cloud. And then uh, we saw what happened in 2017, 2018. Digital had the highest, digital spends were the highest for IT companies and it grew. 2020 was the biggest bull run for IT companies after that. Then the tech stocks started crashing in the US in 2022. The IT stocks crashed as well because they move in tandem somehow now. Now that the tech stocks are doing well in the US, IT stocks are not doing as good as it should have. Because if they are moving in tandem when they go downside, they should go up, they should move in tandem when the US tech stocks go up in the bull run as well. But somehow we have IT stocks have done well, like relatively compared to uh, like other asset classes, other like sectors, IT services has done well, pays uh, like hefty dividends as well. I am very, very, very bullish on IT for the next two, three years because the amount of cash flow that these guys will generate would be unheard of in the last, let's say, the amount of cash flow that these, these guys will generate like will be unheard of. And like, I'm very excited to see how they capture different markets because now we're going to see a lot of ruthless competition among the IT companies as well, because we're going to see spending from all these major players who will invest in AI. These guys are the implementation providers. So these guys are the one who can provide services. They can help companies get fitter compared to if you look at uh, like fitness analogy. So I'm very bullish on IT. That's my end statement. I hope you guys like this video. Like it was a very long one. Like I've done a lot of podcasts, but this was probably the longest solo podcast that I've done. Let me know if you like all these in-depth videos that I'm doing. Let me know what you found it useful. If you found some ideas that would help you make you money and please do me a small favor, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, like the videos, share it with your friends and family who are investing in the stock markets. You might do them a small favor and you're going to help me. That's it from this video. I hope you found this useful. Until next time, peace.